that your Holy Spirit will continue to move in our midst and open our eyes and our hearts and our minds. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. You, Amen. 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 Well, this morning I'll be talking about soul winning and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see throughout the New Testament that the work of the Holy Spirit uh, is really an, uh, it's an essential uh, thing in soul winning. You yeah. know, the soul winning and the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit goes together. They, they work together, right? And we see this even during Jesus' ministry on this earth. Now, we know that uh, when Jesus came to this earth, of course, he never ceased to be God. But when he was ministering, you know, he had laid aside the prerogatives of being God. And actually, he was ministering as a man yeah. and endued with power from on high, Honor. and anointed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? In Acts 10.38, it says, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And as, as an example, we can turn to the Gospel of John, the first chapter, and here we see Jesus you know, starting to call his ministry team together. And I'm going to start reading uh, John chapter 1, verse 45. And it says, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. And when he said that, of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. He was referring, of course, to the Messiah. And then he said, it's Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And verse 46, it says, And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> and so Nathanael was kind of... Uh, not too convinced about what Philip said here. And Philip says to him, well, well, come and see. In other words, just come and see for yourself. But well, check it out. In verse 47, it says, Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. And Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Because Nathaniel didn't know Jesus. He said, how do you know me? And Jesus answered uh, and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Now, how did Jesus know about all this, that he was you know, under the fig tree and all that. Well, the Holy Spirit showed it to him. It was revealed to him, you know, by the Holy Spirit. And when Nathaniel heard that, then he said, Oh, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And then, of course, in verse 50, Jesus said, and answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And Nathaniel did see much greater things, right? He went around with Jesus all throughout his ministry. He saw all the miracles, and he saw probably Jesus die, but at the same time he knew, right? He had seen the resurrected Jesus. I mean, he experienced all that. He was a witness to all that. He saw a lot of things. But what brought him out of doubt, or not, not really knowing whether Jesus was in or not, it was when the Holy Spirit moved and, and revealed to Jesus. He said, I saw you when you were under that fig tree. He said, oh. You know, so it was the move of God, the move of the Holy Spirit that convinced him. And then we can turn to John chapter 4. 
and we will read about the story about the Samaritan woman at the well. I think you know the story. Jesus started ministering to her. We'll see that in the beginning of the chapter. And Jesus was talking about the living water. And she was thinking about the regular water. <laughs> and so she was thinking, now how are you gonna get the, uh, the, the water and you don't have anything to you know, draw with? And so it was, they were on a totally different level. Right? And then, in the course of the conversation, Jesus said to her in verse 16, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one whom you now have is not your husband. And in that you spoke truly. So we see here the operation of the, of the gift of the Spirit. Right? Jesus knew by the, you know, uh, the, gift of the, the, the word. He received the gift of knowledge that she had actually at that time no husband, but she'd been married five times. And when she heard that, when she heard Jesus say, oh, but you had five husbands and all this, in verse 19, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And so when Jesus revealed this, that he knew that it's like her attention was totally at that time drawn to Jesus. Before they were talking about water, the living water, the water, huh? <laughs> but when he shared, you know, that he knew, that, oh, did, did that just piqued her attention. And he, Jesus was able to just continue to minister to her. And by the time he was finished conversing with her, she was convinced, right? Because in verse 25 it says, you know, the woman uh, said to him, well, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, can you imagine, right there in front of her, I who speak to you am he. It's one of these rare occasions where he literally just directly revealed who he was. Okay. I who speak to you am he. You know that he is in the italics. Jesus was saying, I am. <laughs> I am that I am. I am. <laughs> right? And so what happened? Verse 28, it says, the woman then left her water pot. I mean, she must, she received the revelation, the understanding that Jesus was the Messiah. And at that point, she forgot about, she forgot about her water pot. I mean, that was important in those days, that important utensil, right? They didn't have running water and all that. But she totally forgot about water and went her way into the city and said to the men. And you know where it says, and said to the men, that word said, really in the Greek, it's in the present tense. And, yeah, let me just find, yeah, they, and it, it means, right here, I have it here, it says, continuously saying to the men. In other words, anybody that she can grab hold of. It. And that's, that's unusual even in that culture. Women didn't just go up and talk to men like that, right? But she was so excited, and she continuously was saying to the men, come see the man, you know, come, come, you know, come see the man who told me all things that I ever uh, did and of course he didn't you know say all that but she knew that he was the Messiah he could have told her everything that she had done if he wanted to you know, right and so she had that revelation and of course the, the crowd came out and uh, there were many uh, that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and so we see the Holy Spirit working again, you know, to bring people to belief in Jesus. And then, you know, there's an 
uh, really an interesting passage in Luke 7. Luke 7. Now, by this time, you know, the news of all that Jesus was doing was spreading, right? And yet, you know, John the Baptist who was languishing in prison because he had spoken against Herod who had taken his brother's wife. And so, in Luke 7, I'm looking at verse 18, it says, <clears throat> and the disciples of John reported to him, to him meaning the John the Baptist, you know, concerning all these things, all the things that Jesus was doing, because the report about Jesus, the miracles that he was doing, it was just spreading you know, all throughout that region. And in verse 19, it says, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Now, probably, of course, you know, here, Jesus is out there doing all these wonderful things, and John was the one who was like the forerunner to Jesus. He was the one that went through that region, pointing, in, you know, to the coming Messiah, the Lamb of God that was coming. I mean, he was doing all this to prepare the way. And now that Jesus was here and doing all these things, he was languishing in prison. Jesus was not coming to help him, to get him out or anything. And, so, and, and perhaps there were other reasons, but he was just perplexed, you know, uh, why am I, you know, just languishing in prison? He didn't quite understand. And so he sends two disciples of his. In verse 20, it says, When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Now, verse 21 We'll see what Jesus said. Did he say, yes, I am the Messiah, or no? Well, how did he, how did Jesus respond? It's very interesting. It says, he answered this way. Verse 21, in that very hour, he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. So this was his answer. And then Jesus answered and said to him, said to them, go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The poor have the gospel preached to them. What was Jesus saying to these disciples? All right. Now, he, we know that Jesus was quoting from the Old Testament when he said this in verse 22. And let's go back. I'm just going to go back to Isaiah 35. Isaiah 35, verse 5 and 6. Here is one of the messianic prophecies, right? What, will, what they will see when the Messiah is on the scene. It says, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb sing. And then I'm going to turn to Isaiah 61, starting with verse 1, because these are the scriptures that Jesus uh, was quoting. It says in chapter 61 of Isaiah, verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me, 
because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, so what was Jesus doing? See, Jesus knew that John the Baptist was familiar with these verses. And so Jesus was saying, look, I am fulfilling what the Old Testament talked about concerning the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And that's how Jesus you know, was giving evidence of who he was by doing these miracles. And then he told the men, now just go back to John the Baptist, tell him all the things that you saw and heard. So again, the Holy 